you're very welcome to the show and congratulations on your recent success. Thanks so much, Sharon. Thanks for having me on. I'm delighted. So it's it's uh, just over two weeks, I think, since you beat, beat Adelaide Crows in the grand final. Um, how are the celebrations been? Are they starting to die down or are they still going strong? Uh, yeah, it was it was great. Um, I think we had to obviously fly down to Adelaide for the game. So we stayed there the Saturday night and then came back to Brisbane then um, Sunday morning and had a bit of a function um, in one of the um, vet venues here in Brisbane. And then we had the notorious Mad Monday, which, which is really popular with AFL and AFLW teams. Um, and then Tuesday was the awards night. So it's the equivalent of maybe the All-Stars um, for um, the AFLW. So a few of the girls got invited to that and picked up some awards, which was great. And then Friday, then we had our b and which is our best and fairest um, night just for the Brisbane Lions. And um, yeah, it was a great weekend. It went so fast as well. But um, yeah, no, um, it was it was really, really exciting. Brilliant. And um, I suppose just taking you back to the final then, um, you know, we were all following your your year um, closely here. We got great coverage over here as well, TG Carter and diff- newspapers and different things. And with all the commentary before the final was that you were going in as underdogs. Um, did, did Amongst your own group, though, were you quite confident or did you, did you, how did you take being the underdogs? Or Yeah, I think um, going into the final, we knew how good Adelaide were. Um, they beat us back in round four. So I think that was kind of the turning point of our season. Um, after that last week, we had um, back, we had some back-to-back wins after that, and including travel as well. We had to travel over to Fremantle and then also a couple of trips to Melbourne and, and one to Sydney too. So I think that kind of um, shaped us a bit and kind of made us realise um, that it isn't going to be smooth sailing and that it does um, take a lot of hard work. But to get to the o- Adelaide Oval as well um, was huge. And we knew going down that they had big players and we had some um, tactics for that. And the girls did super, especially Cathy Spark and Brie Conan, who um, matched up some of their top players. But I think underneath it all, we, we, were, we knew how good we were. And I think um, we realised that the rest of the competition really didn't know how good we were. So... Um, yeah, we were we were we were confident going in, but we also knew what to expect. And Adelaide, being a super team and having win won the um, AFL final two years ago, twenty nineteen, um, we weren't going to take that for granted. And we were just lucky enough at the day that we came out on top. And like you mentioned there, um, they had won it before. This was I think Brisbane Lions' third final in five years, and you hadn't won it. Um, so what do you think was the difference this year? I mean, you, you had a great season last year. I know it was cut short with COVID, but yeah, you know, you seem to have really um, come on leaps and bounds this year to, and, you know, to finally uh, win the premiership. What is there something that changed or personnel or coaching or just attitude within the camp? Yeah, I think it is just down to, yeah, that what you said. Um, last year, also being my first year, um, there was a lot of new faces brought into that team. That was when, um, the um, the competition got expanded so there was a new team Gold Coast Suns which took a lot of the Brisbane players so coming in last year there was nine or ten new players including myself whereas this year we kind of kept we kept the same group um, with addition of three or four um, and people really improved in the off season because um, um, Melbourne and the Victorian teams were in lockdown during our off season Queensland were lucky enough here to have their um, club equivalent of AFLW being played. And a lot of the girls really stepped up and in the off-season really worked hard. And coming back into pre-season, um, we knew that, that that was a great advantage for us, as, as well as having the um, girls who had been in the two finals already. We had five girls who've been there since season one and they're great leaders as well. So I think everyone just really stepped up and everyone improved um, this year. And even your own game as well, like you said, um, this was only your second season. It's hard to believe, um, you know, you, you had a great debut season, but you really improved this year again. And um, just reading all the match reports, you're always mentioned amongst the top performers. And um, if you go into the Brisbane Lions website, all the stats are there. There's no hiding place. Um, <laughs> disposals, your kicks, your goals, your tackles, everything is there. And like you mentioned, the... the um, the awards there recently you picked up runners up wasn't it is in the yeah 
the, the best, and, fairest, the best yeah. and fairest yeah so, yeah so runners up there which was a huge award a huge achievement in your second year is there anything in particular that you worked on to to um improve your game and to develop and or was there something the coaches said you need to work on this or that or is it just natural your second year that's the way you improve so much I think it is a bit of everything really um Obviously, it was a hard decision for me to decide to come out when I did, as we were still in championship back home with Camogie and football with Tip. And I had deferred my year of college already and and given up my job. And I had several flights cancelled and I didn't know what was was ahead, really. Um, But I suppose making that decision to come out um, when I did at the start of November and getting my quarantine done and then getting into pre-season as quickly as I could, I knew coming over this year um, that I wanted to give it my full attention, full commitment. And um, I think just really work on my weaknesses, but also develop my strengths as well. And lucky enough, um, in our preseason, I've, I always played half forward, the same position I played last year. But um, one of the girls got injured in the practice match, the wing, the wingers. And um, I, the coach was asked me, would I like to play in the wing position, which, which is more sim, which is more familiar Um to like the midfield in Gaelic football which I'd be more comfortable playing so it's the attacking up and back and also covering ground getting back to help the backs but also being scoring options up front so I suppose I really enjoyed that role you're kind of on the ball more and involved more um with the play so I think that helped um <laughs> my disposals and tackles as well a bit and as well as attacking I think last year I was kind of doing I kind of was more of a GA head and was kind of more just putting pressure on or kind of um shepherd in a bit whereas this year I think I just fully went for it and tried to um get more tackles in and just um think with a more of an AFL head so I think that that helped me and I was very grateful as well to get the award as well oh that sounds excellent um makes a lot of sense um and how does it compare um you know preparing for you know the grand final um you know you've played massive games with tip um You've played in all-Ireland minor finals. You've played in all-Ireland senior semi-finals. You've played in all-Ireland football, ladies football finals. Um, how did they compare playing in the AFLW grand final? Um, was this a bigger stage, more nerves, less nerves? Or I think, um, yeah, I think it, 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 it'd be very similar to playing an all-Ireland final back home. Um, like the two times when I did get to play in Croke Park, um, which were huge for me, I think um, it kind of, we've got lots of similarities with that day. Obviously, being down in Adelaide, I think there was probably 29,000 Adelaide fans and 1,000 Brisbane fans. But um, I suppose you could really hear them and, and they were really loud and they were great to come down and support us. But um, yeah, very similar to I found um, the Gaelic and the All-Ireland Finals. And I think, I suppose you just have to play the occasion. And I love playing in front of big crowds like that. And when everything's on the line as well, it's either you win or lose and it's a fit, you're finished then. I think that's what really um, salvaged it and everyone just really performed on the day and um, lucky enough that um, we did get the win in the end. And now that your season is over, um, I assumed you'd be relaxing and chilling out, but um, when I was in touch with you about organising uh, today's interview, I, you mentioned working and training, so you sound like you're still very busy. So what's your daily schedule like at the moment? Yeah, so after our week of kind of celebrations, we kind of, um, everyone kind of went back to normality, really, back to work. And I suppose I haven't really been around that because last year I obviously went home when COVID hit back in March. So I've always I've only really been training here. So it's kind of different um, the week. So I'm working in a school, um, primary school, doing before and after school care a couple of days a week as an educator, which is kind of leaning and helping me towards um, my teaching degree, which I'm hoping to get done as well, um, that I'm studying in UL. Um, and then I suppose we're also going back training with um, our Quaffle clubs, which is the equivalent of um, kind of club championships. So the club championship kind of starts a couple of weeks after our season starts and it continues all the way um, to July. So um, a few of the all AFLW players have to um, be part of a club team as well. So, yeah, I've joined one of those um, club teams and we're kind of, told to do lots that we we're, we have running and gymming programs back again and I suppose yeah just for the couple of weeks that I'm left here or I don't really know what my plans are yet just just still playing amongst it and and getting 
um, familiar and staying with the group as well. It, it's really good. And what club are you with then at the moment? Then is that an ad, or a Brisbane club? Near yeah. So yeah. there's there's yeah there's a couple of um, clubs. Um, it's kind of like Gold Coast and Brisbane, kind of all together in the Queensland um, equivalent of um, a club championship. And um, I'm with UQ, the University of Queensland. They're called so. A couple of um, the players like Dakota Davidson, Brie Conan, Nat Grider, Greta Bodie um, are all involved in that club too. So it, it's a close one as well. So I was kind of happy to pick up any club um, because I knew I'd know a few girls on the team. So yeah, we're training there maybe twi- twice a week now and we do our running and gym together too. So yeah, it's enjoyable in the evenings. So no rest for you. Um, so I suppose <laughs> some people mightn't be aware of that. So, so the, uh, the AFLW is a recent enough, um, would you say, semi-professional kind of competition? And so the girls then are, are playing with their own clubs, their own leagues then, you know, some of them are obviously picked to play with the likes of Brisbane and Adelaide and all these teams. Is that how it works? Or Yeah, so essentially um, with the semi-professional here, um, everyone would have to have playing with their club. They also have academies, so it would be the equivalent of developing squads back home who they um, kind of develop um, develop their skills and they kind of bring into our training sometimes and they'd be young players, maybe 16 to 18 and they, they're hoping to get into the Brisbane Lions team in a couple of years but um, yeah, with the clubs, everyone kind of plays with them and they're kind of great for the players who don't get um, selected to play with the AFLW on teams they can play club that weekend so they're still getting games and they still feel like, um, yeah, they, they can do stuff for their club and they're not um, out of it really. And they get to still get those competitive games involved, which which is really great. So um, it kind of runs, yeah, for a couple of months. And um, I suppose they were really lucky last year that they could finish it out. And I think that's where lots of players do develop and really work on their strengths. And um, you could we could see that obviously last year with the girls all coming back this year, having such big improvements. And like I, you're the only Irish player with the Brisbane Lions. Obviously, there's other Irish players and other teams. But would all the rest of the girls on your team be, um, do you know, from Australia and local, or are are there players after coming from different sports as well, like you? Or yeah, so la- last year when I came in, um, there was another girl, Greta. She came from soccer background, um, and then Courtney Hodder, who who was a superstar this year, she came from rugby. Um, she played rugby as well. So there is a few girls from other areas with a few from Victoria, one from Adelaide, one from Perth. Um, so, but the majority of them are from Brisbane, but um, that's the way with every clubs and with the sign um, and trade that happens, um, which we have in a couple of weeks and pe- players get moved around and some players get delisted and you kind of recruit new players. They, they can kind of come from different States as well and different countries too. So um, yeah, I suppose that's the, the good thing about, um, playing with the teams you never know what to expect each season because you don't know what players and um, teams have and, and how good they'll be that just leads me on to the next question I was going to ask you so ha- have you either had any discussions with the club yet about next year or contracts or, or coming back again next season um, I have we, we kind of have our exit review which is where we'll have meetings with um, the kind of coach the CEO and some of the strength and conditioning team um, in the next couple of weeks so our head coach has actually gone back um to switzerland his wife works there so they'll be going on over zoom in next couple of weeks and they'll have more chats about it but um i i'm hoping that um, i will get another chance to come back and i suppose just seeing how much i've grew grown from last year to this season um i like to see um if i can progress further and obviously once you get to a grand final and win one you want to go back and do it again and again um it's same as with GA once you get to Croke Park you want to get there every year so um, there's nothing really written out yet or nothing set in stone but um, I think the next couple of weeks um, we'll find out more. Okay and I suppose the question that everyone at home here is wondering is will we see you on the GA pitches in in Tipperary anytime soon and I suppose you know is your plan to come back and play ladies football and come over for Tipperary in 2021? Yeah, definitely. I think even being away from um, the sport for, for them couple of months and not playing it at all, I think you realise how much you do miss it. So, um, yeah, great news this week here and about the fixtures being out for the Kogian football. And, 
yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting back and um, trying to get back into the team as well and, and seeing everyone again. I think like my best friends have been involved with the Camogie and football and they've been so supportive of the AFLW and I'm really looking forward to, to getting back and playing the sport that I've been playing for so long and um, giving the best shot and hopefully trying to get to some All-Ireland finals in both Camogie and football. And have you any dates then in mind to come home or will you be playing a few games um, with the club there now? Do you have to play that league for, for, the, for the summer or will you be home before then? Or? Um, I'm hoping to um, yeah head home. My lease is up the end of May, kind of start of June time. So uh, yeah, we have um, a few things planned and a few events coming up at the end of May. We have um, a kind of um, footy trip, which we're going up north. And then we have... Um, just some um, sightseeing and just getting around Brisbane more and Queensland and going to some of the events while everything's still open here, getting soaking all that in. But um, yeah, no, I'm definitely looking forward to coming back um, probably at the end of the month. Okay, well, that would be good news to, I suppose, all the Camogie Lays football supporters here at home. Um, I'll just take it back to, um, I remember you made headlines, I suppose, in your first training session um, last season where you, you broke the... I think it was two kilometer trial run the best time and um, broke the club record. And I think that's your main asset um, to the club is your pace. Um, I see a lot of time when they talk about you, they talk about your pace and your power and your engine. And do you think that's a big part of your game? Would you still be one of the fastest players or quickest players on in the club? <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose like it's, it's the same with, with camogie and football like I'd always find my strengths more my power and pace um compared to my skills um per se but um yeah I suppose that was that was kind of just a dream kind of entry coming into the club I'm um, not really knowing anyone and our first training last year doing the 2k I, I was actually lucky enough to miss it this year being in quarantine but um yeah no I think um yeah it's one of my big strengths here and being playing at the wing role as well um it really suits me with, with running up and down and, and using using my strengths that way. Um, but I think um, this year as well, just trying to improve more my physicality as well. So doing more tackles and bumps and, and getting involved that way as, as well as my kicking as well and trying to keep on top of that. But yeah, I reckon it would be one of my um, my strong points and I think trying to improve that as well and become better for next for, for next time as well. And could you see more, um, say, intercounty footballers, these footballers um, going out to Australia or, you know, is, is the league planning to expand out there or do you think they'll be looking for more people to come out and do you think other intercounty players would excel out there like, like you have and like Ashley McCarthy has? And Yeah, I, I definitely think that um, it's, it's growing and, and it's only going to get bigger and bigger and I think um, there will be more clubs um, expanding into them, wanting to get involved, even just seeing how far the competition has come in the past few years. It's only, it's only five, five years old and already the crowds and attendances and people viewing the games is, has grown enormously. And every, every team kind of has academies now and set up. So um, there's always going to be those younger girls coming up and coming through the ranks. And I suppose with the um, Irish girls coming over, I suppose that's what kind of got me, um, wanted to come over here in the first place seeing how successful the Irish girls were the likes of Cora Sarah Sarah Rowe Ashley McCarthy who I play with as well and Eilish Constantine they were all getting games and they were all doing very well for their clubs in their first in the first year and you could see that they all had that pace and that kind of natural instinct to kind of play on and take the game on a lot so I think that's um, what coaches look for as well and with the game here it is evolving to more of that running and taking the game on compared to the kind of slower game of holding the ball up. So I think that's where the Irish players do kind of excel and use our pace that way. And I think we've seen that a lot throughout the season with different um, clubs and all the Irish girls getting games and really um, stepping up and and being big players for their teams. So, yeah, I can definitely see more girls coming out and even more teams wanting Irish girls. So it's just a matter of who they take or, or who they select. Okay. And how would you compare, you know, you're involved in, um, I suppose, Tip Camogie and Tip Lays football panels and your club and all that for, you know, for years. And How would you compare it being involved in, um, you know, the Brisbane Lions team? Is there similarities in terms of, you know, being part of a team and or would you think it's a lot of differences or? 
Yeah, I think there's lots of um, similarities um, with them. I always try and compare the two. But um, yeah, there's always such a great group um, of girls to work with. And I think that's the great thing about it. It's such a team sport like Camogie and football. And everyone quickly becomes best friends and sisters, which is great. And especially for me coming out here, not really knowing anyone, how welcoming um, everyone is. And the same with um, coaches as well. They're all there to help you and to maybe have if you need extra sessions for extra kicking which which I got at the start as well um they're so um helpful that way and, and always on board to give you advice um but yeah same similarities would be the likes of the training um it's similar with the likes of case you run and the similarities with maybe doing conditioning at the end and the game sense stuff um the only thing I think with the AFLW we kind of arrive um instead of arriving let's say at seven and training at half seven and being there for an hour or two, you kind of arrive at four, four thirty. Might have to get massages, um, do your kind of prehab, um, rehab, all that kind of stuff. You train, then after training, you come in and recover, have ice baths, maybe get some food. Um, so it's longer, it's longer training session. You'll be there from four, half four to maybe half nine, and won't get home till ten. So they are longer, and the same then with just the access to um, strength and conditioning coaches, physios, nutritionists, um, doctors 24-7 as well. I suppose that's the semi-professional side of it, having all those on board too. But um, yeah, lots of similarities. And the amount of times we train is very similar to back home um, in that regard. Oh, it's very interesting. I love hearing all about the resources and the facilities. Um, I remember listening to an interview with, with Cora Staunton, I think it was the first year she was out, and what she found a huge difference and even hard to get used to was that um, we'll say you're playing, a, I think, a match nearly every weekend. And in between, you wouldn't really train. It was more recovery and uh, rest and stats and stuff. Yeah. While she had been used to maybe ladies football, <laughs> Mayo, straight back to training Tuesday and Thursday and another match. And she was kind of nearly told, hey, you have to rest up and take it easy. Or did you find that? And is that a sign then that maybe we overtrain in, in, in Gaelic games or? Yeah, I think because um, you have kind of two seasons, so it's broken into pre-season and then in-season. So your pre-season, you're doing lots and lots of extra conditioning, lots of hard, sweaty Saturday sessions. And they kind of want you to be fatigued going into training sessions to kind of build up, um, being able to build up that adaptability for games. And then once you're in-season, because it is such a short season at the moment, which I think we had 11, 12 weeks, and you're playing every weekend, you're not getting maybe two weeks off, um, or a week off um, between games. Um, so they kind of want the team to be fresh every week at, every week going into games. And on top of that, you might have to fly, let's say, to Perth, which is a four-hour flight and back, or down to Melbourne too. And that takes a lot out of you as well. And it's harder to recover from, from those. So I think, yeah, in season, big focus on just recovery. And we would have two, yeah, light sessions, maybe a gym session too on top of that. And stability making sure that everyone is fresh and isn't getting injured um coming into the next game so i think because it's such a short season they want everyone to try last all the games as well that it that it is that way but um yeah that that would be the main differences between the pre-season and in-season and then how long would your pre-season go on for like is that weeks or the months is it yeah so pre-season usually starts the end of october kind of start of november you do a bit of um, you do a bit of um, education where they kind of talk through um, the rules and what the season outlook's going to look like, and and then preseason goes on then until um, the end of January, and then season starts then in February. So you know it's kind of a quick turnaround. And last year we actually trained. Um, I think the 27th of December we trained. Um, so we were back very early with training and you don't really have time off between then, but the season is short that everyone is on top of it and, and they know that um, it'll, be o- it'll be quickly over then. And is the pre-season there tougher than any kind of pre-season you would have done with Camogie or Days football or is it similar? Or... Yeah, it's definitely, def- definitely different. I think because you're in the middle of summer as well, so... It could be anywhere between it could be anywhere between twenty five to thirty five degrees training. And I think that really adds to it too. Um and it's just I think the mental side of it getting over the I suppose after a hard training session having to do running after that. And then the dreaded Saturday sessions are always um bright and early too, where you have lots of running and it's usually very hot. And the same with the gym sessions. I think um we just they really try to build up the load going into us 
Um, but then, you know, once the season comes and you're playing the games that you are going to be fish and ready to take on any team. Okay. And would you get like, you know, fed after trainings and matches and all looked after that way? And um, Yeah, I suppose it, dep- it depends. So we always get fed after games, we get a meal and then with um, pre-season and after training, it kind of depends. So if a trainer went extra long because we had meetings or if for some reason it was um, a change of venue last minute because of weather, um, we might get food brought brought to us and um, stuff like that. And they'd always have snacks before training because some girls would be coming straight from work. So they have snacks in the fridge and yogurts and um, bananas and rice crackers and stuff. And then after the game, they always have the protein there, protein shakes for us to have. And then it depends um, if we get dinner or not. But most of the time we go home and cook our own food. And are you living with some of your teammates? Um, This year I'm not. No, I'm living with um, two other girls in uh, Kangaroo Point, which is um, a really nice central area, which I I want to live in. Because being the job that I am, I have... um, I have a lot of time off in the day because I work before school and then after school too. So it's great to get your gym and get your running done then. And I suppose you have a lot of free time then. So it's nice to um, go around. Is, um, the river is just outside um, my doorstep here and it's really central that way. But hopefully next year, if I do come back, that I suppose planning on living with a couple of girls and just being in that same atmosphere as them will, will be nice too. And it sounds like, um, you know, you've really adjusted to life in Australia. Um, sounds like it really suits you. Um, you're excelling on the field and enjoying life off it. Um, you know, and you're interested in going back. So obviously you are enjoying it. But do you find it hard being away from home or, you know, missing the family? And Yeah, definitely. I think um, being away, yeah, you, you miss me even more. And how supportive they've been. I think they've had a tough getting up at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., 6 a.m. for games as well so but they, they've they've been up for every game and they're they're definitely my number one supporters and um they're they're so proud of me out here and I think just seeing how how um how much better I've gotten this year and how much more I've enjoyed the game because I, I know how to play it and you're obviously when you play better um as well you enjoy that the whole atmosphere around it so yeah they they're missing it and I, I'd love them to come out eventually to to see life out here and how different it is to back home and just see the setup in Brisbane lines and, and what everyone else is like and to meet the people who are essentially um, my best friends over here and, and the coaches and staff around that are so helpful. Um, but yeah, they, they're, they're hugely supportive and yeah, looking forward to getting back, seeing them. I think that's a big part of um, my returning back home too, as well as playing camogie and football. Okay. And or it's hard to believe that you're only 22. Um, you know, you've played in two all Ireland, you've won two all Ireland uh, finals in today's football. Uh, you've won a minor Camogie all Ireland. You've won county finals with Cashel. Um, you've achieved so much. You've captained Tipperary senior Camogie team, and now you're after winning an AFLW grand final. And all at 22, it's just amazing. You're an absolutely superb talent. Um, but is there other things you'd like to achieve? Other sporting goals? Um that you have in mind you know <laughs> um yeah I suppose um with the big ones I suppose are the obvious ones just winning an all-Ireland final with the camogie senior camogie in Tipperary and also with um the ladies football um senior level two would be huge um and then hopefully if I come back out here to win another um grand final but I think it, it's just overall just improve myself um, as an athlete and as a person and just trying to build and improve maybe one percent each time and just try and work on focus on the things I can focus on and try and get better that way by listening to the people around you your coaches and your teammates and just and just being a good leader um in that regard for a pleasure um I think you're living a lot of uh people you know young girls dreams and even older ones like me you've been a you know, professional <laughs> athlete and um, absolutely admire you so much and uh, you're a great role model to so many people so um, thanks again for joining us here on the Camogie Report podcast um, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on as a guest and and I wish you the very best uh, in the rest of your sporting career um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if some other sport in our
organization came looking for you. <laughs> you took up some other sport. I no doubt you'd excel at it. And you deserve all the recognition and accolades that come your way. And all of us here in Tipperary Camogie are so proud of you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back in the blue and gold uh, in the not too distant future. Thanks so much. And thanks so much for having me. And just a shout out to like Tiff and everyone back home. They're so supportive. And even being out here, I didn't think most people even watch it or, or know what it's about. But yeah, no, everyone's been superb. And even with TJ Carr getting on board, yeah, it makes it really exciting for going back home playing. This Saturday sees the start of the Little Woods Ireland Division 2 League. I recently caught up with Intermediate Manager Keen Tracy, who took some time out from preparations to chat to me on the Camogie Report podcast. Keen, it must have been a huge relief there recently when you got the go ahead dash the county second teams or classes elite and after disappointment of last year. Yeah, Geraldine, I think it was very disappointing on the girls last year. I wasn't involved now, but to not be able to participate in the championship. So for them to have missed out in two years, if they had missed out again this year, I think for a lot of them it would have been really, really tough to take. So from their point of view more so than anyone else, I'm absolutely delighted that they get the chance to represent Tipperary and they, they absolutely deserve it. They're great to train and work hard together. So just delighted that they're back training and delighted as a group we're back. Yeah, it must have been a huge buzz at the moment now just to finally get back into the field and, um, you know, collective training. I'd, I'd imagine the, the atmosphere is good. Ah, the atmosphere is great and everything has come back in good condition and obviously they all did their own work uh, in the off-season. I think everyone was just raring to go, all the boys on the management team, Ailish, everyone was just mad for action and there's a great buzz around at the moment and just everyone is in good form and the sun has been shining most of the time we've been training. And I think, Geraldine, it's very tough to train on your own and no matter how much training you do on your own or maybe in twos or threes or whatever they do with their clubs, it doesn't replicate what it's like to be in that group environment and there's a bit of fun and a bit of crack and a bit of spirit and that's what we're trying to build and foster here. So we're delighted so far with how it's went and we're delighted to have everyone back. I suppose in the last couple of years, Tipperary have gone with the same management team for seniors and intermediates. Um, this year obviously is two separate management teams. It's probably become nearly impossible to have the one with the way the fixtures are. Um, I presume you're happy with that and believe this is the best way forward for the intermediate team. Yeah, uh, Bill and his management team did a great job over the last two years with both teams, but it's a really, really tricky one. How do you give absolutely everything to two groups of players who sometimes the fixtures overlap? And we're seeing with the league fixtures, they're both nearly playing at the same time. You're splitting management teams, you're splitting physios, you're splitting backroom staff. So it was a really, really tricky one. They did a great job. They got to two All-Ireland semi-finals. They won a, a National League Division 2. So Bill did a great job. We're delighted now, and I think the players are happy maybe that there's a split in order that we give full attention to this team and this team are absolutely a great team to work a great team to train and we're delighted to have them and kind of give them our full attention and that really was i think the decision behind it and uh, that bill wanted to be fair to every player on both panels and give them the best opportunity to represent their county to the best of their abilities and i suppose knock on effect of that i suppose um that Bill would want to strengthen and expand his senior panel and uh, when they're training separately now and you see the likes of Claire Stakelum and Andrea Lachnan I suppose that were key players on the intermediate team now permanently on the senior panel and you know obviously not available to your squad does that weaken your squad or how do you feel or I think as an intermediate manager and an intermediate management team our number one goal is to create players or produce players that are good enough to play at the highest level for Tipperary and we're all rolling in behind Bill in order to strengthen his team and make Tipperary as senior Camogie team as strong as possible so I'd have absolutely no issues with that we've young players have come into our panel they're developing they're really really good players and they're players for the future and we're hoping that they'll move on to play senior for Tipperary as well so I'd have absolutely no issues with any players moving up it's like any club any inter-county programme we want them to be the best players they can be and develop Good and um, so looking forward to the league starting on the 15th of May you're at home to Cork then away to Galway at home to Kerry it's a tough group it is a tough group with Geraldine but we want to test ourselves we want to see you know and we're under no illusions uh, Cork and Galway are two of the, the premier teams in this competition. We want to test our players and see where we're at. See what players measure up. And some players, unfortunately, won't make the grade. And that's just the reality of elite, of inter-county sport, that play, some players will not make the grade. And we want to find that out in the league rather than in championship where it might be in a knockout scenario. So we're really enthused. We're really looking forward to it. And we can't wait to get going and test ourselves against the best teams in this competition. Okay. Uh, Keen, I suppose you're around Camogie now for a good few years. Um, you've been involved at club, county and schools level. Um, would you see disappointment as the intermediate manager as your biggest, kind of most important manager role to date? Or? 
Um, I think in any role you're in, you probably think at the time it's your most important. Uh, I start off in the presentation, Thurlis Secondary School, um, over their senior team, and then moved on to County Minor. I always thought they were the biggest gigs, and now on to this. And it's another important managerial appointment for me, but look, it's just another step on the road. And every time we go out train, I give it 100%, but if I'm training the first years in school, I give that 100% as well. And when they're playing matches, I give it as much as I give here. So for me, it's just a, it's it's another day at the office. It's another game. And as I said, I just always give it 100%. So look, it's nice. It's nice recognition to get in at inter-county level, but uh, you're always kind of thinking of the next game, next training session. So I don't really get too bogged down in that kind of thing. Okay, and just finally, Keen, um, I suppose, what can we expect from a Keen Tracy managed team? Like, is there a key trait that you look for from the girls, or what kind of style of play would you hope to adopt? I'm very lucky that I have really good coaches in uh, Matthew McGrath, Aaron Whelan. Brian Stale, Camille Schmer, and to be fair, I think uh, I read an article yesterday. I think there's too much praise given to managers, and probably they get a lot of flack when they lose, but uh, they got a lot of praise when they win. And uh, I think the style of play will be implemented by them more so than me. They spend a lot of time on the field with the players. I'll certainly give them pointers to the way we want to play. We like to play an expensive attacking brand of Camogie. Sometimes that's easier said than done, but um, look, it'll be those guys on the field along with the players, and. There's probably no Keane Tracy style of team, it's down to the players you have, their abilities and how they can play and how you can maybe uh, help them uh, develop and play in the style that you want. That's really it, Charlie. Perfect. Um, Keane, thanks very much for taking the time to chat to us here on the Camogie Report podcast and best wishes for the season ahead. Thanks many, Charlie. Sorry, also sees the start of the Littlewoods Ireland Division 1 League. Unfortunately, the up this game, most of the talk has surrounded the fixture saga, but I met Julianne Burke. Her focus was firmly on on-field action. I'm joined by Julianne Burke, first Lee and Tipperary Senior Camogie player, just for a quick chat ahead of the start of the Little Woods National League. Um, Julianne, you're back training now in the field a couple of weeks. How is that going? Hi Geraldine. Yeah, we're back. This is our third week back. Look, we're delighted to be back. I suppose during lockdown we were so used to playing by ourselves and now it's just great to be playing alongside the girls again and just getting group sessions in. So it's brilliant to be back. And I'd imagine the atmosphere is good. You know, you had a good year last year reaching the semi-final. Um, you know, what's the vibe like in the camp at the moment? Yeah, it's very positive. I suppose there was a great excitement back three weeks ago when we got the date to go back. Um, uh, very good buzz in training as well. I suppose the training sessions are really structured brilliantly with the new management in as well. So it's um, really, really good. Uh, a lot of competition for places as well. So um, a good complaint, I suppose. And how did you find training on your own during the lockdown? Um, programs to do or how did you keep motivated? Yeah I suppose look as the management were very very supportive they gave us different sessions you know I, I know myself what I did is I kind of broke it down to whatever day I had to do a session during like Monday Wednesday Friday whatever and then it just became habit or routine but um, the sessions were all different um, so you didn't get sick of the same thing um, and I suppose another thing was getting out of the house and getting to your house and for your mental health as well just to get out and get a session and you buzzing after getting a session done as well so. Very good and just you know, it was disappointment last year, obviously with COVID, we didn't get to play the league final. Um, so, would your aim this year be to get back to the league final, kind of to make up for that last year? Yeah, like you said, I suppose we got to the league final for the first time in I don't know how long. There was a big gap there anyway, but then lockdown came and we didn't get to play it. So, yeah, we have Cork and Water in our group this this year. So, I suppose we'll take it game by game and see how we go. But I suppose yeah, the ultimate goal is to get back to the league final and to, to win it. And you mentioned their Cork, so Cork is the first round this Saturday, 2 p.m. in Parky Cueve. And um, you know you played them a lot recent years between league and championship, once the championship. I think it's fair to say they've had the upper hand. So how do we go about beating Cork uh, next Saturday? What do you think uh, you as a group need to do? Yeah, you're right. They've had the upper hand on us the last few years, and I suppose they're the top three, you know, with Kenny and Galway as well. Um, but I suppose, look, we need to bring massive energy, massive work rate, and just bring it for the full 60 minutes. I suppose in the past we might have dropped it and maybe left it behind us. But um, just, yeah, trust in each other, honesty, and just massive work rate. Don't just stop their running game and just stop their key players. And um, then looking forward to the championship whenever it takes place this year. Um, my opinion would be that it'll probably be the most competitive championship for a long, long time. Um, I really feel Tip and Waterford have narrowed the gap on the top three, as you mentioned. And Limerick and Dublin have new management teams, we expect a bounce from them. Um, what do you think Tip need to do to get back to an All-Ireland final? I suppose we'd all love to see us get back to an All-Ireland final for the first time since 2006. Yeah, I th- it's definitely narrowing all right. You know, the last few years it has been Galway, Cork, Kenya, and I suppose it's between them who win it or whatever. But um, as you said, Waterford and ourselves are knocking on the door now. But I suppose we've kind of come to semi-finals the last few years. We 
really want to get to a final this year. I suppose just keep knuckling down, training hard, um, and just constantly raising the standards. Like we just we don't want to settle for a semi final. We want to push on. We want to get to a final. We want to win it. Very good. Thanks, Julianne. Uh, best look on Saturday. Thanks, William Jardine. Thanks to all my three guests who joined me for episode four of the Camogie Report podcast. Um, our attention now turns to the start of the Littlewoods Ireland Division 1 and 2 league. Um, the senior team will travel to Cork this Saturday to take on Cork in Parky Cueve at 2pm in their opening round of the league. Um, while the intermediate team uh, take on Cork uh, in Drummond Inch GA Field in the RAG uh, also on Saturday at 2pm. So keep an eye on the social media, to various social media pages for all details on streaming and for score updates and results over the weekend. I hope you've enjoyed the Camogie Report podcast brought to you by Tipperary Camogie TV. Be sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and we look forward to the next episode of the Camogie Report podcast.